Hello there and welcome here to my little arty corner on YouTube. I'm Angela, Angela Porter, and it's my pleasure for you to join me here as I actually do something experimental. I've already forgotten the name of the YouTube channel I was watching earlier today. I will link it in there, but I was watching somebody doing um, sort of like abstract art that used some neuro neurographica, neurographic art and um, sort of like doodling, she called it, but you know, just textural patterns and um, sort of like tanglish patterns and so on. But she painted the background first with watercolours. I'm not going to use watercolours today. What I'm going to do is I had a request in the comments to show how I create distress ink backgrounds. And um, this is how I do it. It may not be, it's definitely not the only way, but we're going to see what happens. Now, let me explain to you what distress inks are. Oh, if you're new here, you're most welcome. And I hope you enjoy the video. If you're a returning visitor, you are very welcome. And if any of you haven't subscribed yet, but you like what I do, then please consider subscribing to the channel. And um, thumbs up videos are always nice as well. It lets me know I'm on the right track. And that's lovely. So these are distress inks. I'm just looking here as to the colour, if there's any of these I'd like. They, the ones I've got are these mini cubes. You can get them in bigger ink pads, but these suit my purpose. They take up a lot less space to store. And as I tend not to do huge amounts of distress ink, it works fine. Um, distress ink is an ink that always reacts with water. It's not a permanent ink. So it's, um, it's a water soluble ink. And I particularly like the Distress Ink palette because there's some lovely colours in here, but there's also some distressed and grungy colours. So you can get a lovely mix. And because they're water reactive, they you can sprinkle them with water, spray them with water, get different effects. That's a good point. Where is my heat tool? I uh, can't see it. Don't know where I've put it. Ho-hum, no problem. We will sort that one out should I get to that point. But it creates these wonderful textures there. Um, in fact, I'm going to go and find my heat tool. Back with my heat tool. Now, this heated tool looks more like a hairdryer than um, an embossing tool they use in card making. Sends out hot air, but with not much of a... Um, force behind it, it's a gentle breeze, so it doesn't blow things around on the paper wet, you know, wet areas, um, unlike an embossing tool which would. So I like, I like this, you can see it's very old and it's very grubby, but it still works, so it doesn't matter what it looks like. So you can get some lovely textures, now I'm no expert with these, honestly. But to apply these to paper, there's a couple of things you can use. One of them is to use one of these tools, which are relatively inexpensive. You've got these foam pads which stick to the bottom and you pick the ink up on this foamy side and use it to spread out. I like, you can also use these which are makeup brushes really. You can buy branded ones that are quite expensive or you can buy just generic ones from Amazon, which are relatively inexpensive or from other places. Um, and they last for quite a long time. In fact, I haven't managed to wreck them yet. Not that I use them often, but my often favorite thing to use is this stuff. It comes in a sheet, it's called cut and dry foam. I'm not sure how easy it is to get hold of. Um, cut and dry foam is from Ranger who make the distress inks, um, Tim Holtz distress inks and the blending tool. Um, this comes here, but there are other craft companies that make similar. You could use, it's the same kind of foam as Fun Foam, it's just quite thick. So I guess you could use that if you mounted it on something. But I like this because it it seems to blend better for me, or I seem to be able to get effects better. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that. I've got these out in case I want that green there, although it tends to be quite a pale colour, so I may just put that back. And yeah, I've got mine in these tins because having them floating around on their own in boxes is never a good idea. So I've got greens, I've got some blues, and I've got some pinks and purples. These letters sprung up, so I've 
keeping these in here. And so I want to use a combination of these and I'm going to be careful which colours I pick because they um, they will affect... Oh, hang on, I'm just reaching for a ruler. I've got a ruler. They will, you know, they will blend together as I'm applying them. Next thing, where are my glasses? Over there. Oh, gosh. It's just about quarter past midday here. I'm in the UK. It is Thursday the... Oh, it's the 1st of June. It's a new, new month. And um, I... I can't believe that. I should, I should really be working for my new book, colouring book, which I can tell you what it's called because it's out there to, for pre-order now. Somebody discovered the other day because I keep forgetting to look. It's called Daydreams. But I've got I've got 10 or 11 templates sort of done already. So um, as long as I make a start very soon, I'll be fine. And as I see, my days seem to be getting later. Don't, my, my sleep is all over the place. So I'm going to start with some pinks, some purples, um, and I'm just going to put them on. And I'm going to use this tool for a, a change. For I, I'm, I can't believe I've still got them and I've got plenty of these, which is even better. Um, so I'm going to use some purples. I'm going to use this one, which is upside down. But it's called um, Seedless Preserves and it's this lovely sort of like reddy purpley colour. So I'm just going to load some onto this tool. I've got a piece of scrap paper under here so I can just test and see how this will work. There we go. And then I'm just going to put some swirls of this colour here and there. I'm not thinking, overthinking where I'm putting them. I think I would like a bit more colour than this. And the nice thing about distress inks, unlike watercolours, they don't fade as they dry. And yeah, I've put pencil lines on because that will give me a guide as to perhaps where the design will end, but it may run off to the edge of the paper because I, I shall see what happens. I think I just need a little bit more. Rule of threes. Odd numbers, please. Always works for me. And then I can just Actually, I'll hang on to that because I think I might just put some purple in the middle. And I think for this one, I'm going to use this, which is Villainous Potion. No, it's not. It's Wilted Violet. I was looking at Villainous Potion, which is um, a deep, rich purple, this kind of colour. But I've gone for this one because I'm just thinking I just want some colour variations here. And yeah, using the same foam applicator because the inks get transferred quite well. And I can just rub off most of the excess. You can see there's hardly any left, if I move myself over a bit, hardly any left on there of that purpley colour. Oh, so I've got pickled raspberries. Sorry, it's picked raspberry, which is a lovely bright pink. So I'm going to add some of that here and there with this, these colours, I think. Now the aim of this is I want to I want to end up with a very abstract, colourful pattern that I can work with intuitively to create um, lovely patterns. And I'll pop that under the pickle. Oh, there's one under the pickled raspberry. Pop it under oh, Kitsch Flamingo, which is a garish pink, and I mean garish. It's lovely, but it is garish. Right, I'm done with them for now. Let me put the heat tool down out of the way so I've got a bit more space. Um, I'm going to go on to blues and I think I'm going to use some of this which is Mermaid Lagoon. It's a lovely colour, it's a lovely sea-like colour. There we are, I'll check underneath to see if I've got any of these pads there, I haven't. So again I'm just going to load some ink here, I'm going to see if I've got enough on here. When they're new these sometimes need a bit of priming. So I'm going to start filling in the regions in between these, but I'm also going to overlap the, the colours as well. Because I just think you get those lovely patches of colour and that everything works really nicely. You know, you get these lovely colour blends and everything else. 
I'm putting my fingers in these, which isn't something I would normally do, but I am today because I'm going to give this a spritz of water or some drops of water to create some added texture. Now, is this a dark enough colour? Probably. I've put plenty of it down. I think I would like just to add some more there. Now, I'm not pressing very hard with this um, blending tool. But oddly, I've got the other tools out and I'm going with this. Who would have thought it? I do want a darker blue on here. Prize Ribbon is a lovely blue. It's one of, I think it's not last year's, the year before's release of colours. I haven't got last year's yet. You can see it's a lovely sort of light royal, royal blue. So I'm just going to add this in places again, just for that little bit of interest and variation. I'm going to put some on here, perhaps a bit too much, but it is what it is. And it's more about what do I do with all of this afterwards. Perhaps a little bit over here as well then. And if they, you know, if I've got edges to the colours, I'm not worried because this will all work out eventually. So I'll pop that one to one side and then just add that there. Take that off. Oh, I can pop that in the little, little hidey hole there. Pop those back. And then here I've got my greens. Now, I want a colour that will blend nicely with these. I want a light green and a dark green. Peacock Feathers is lovely. It's very much a, a greeny blue. It's, I wouldn't say it was teal, but it is a lovely, lovely colour. So I'm going to pick some up on my blending foam and Add some here. I also know it works well with pinks and purples. It creates a lovely colour. It's sort of like a grey, it becomes a greyish kind of colour, which is actually quite pleasing. So I'm going to add some of this in places, let it overlap. I am going to come back with some more pink and purple once I've done this, I think. So I've got a large area there of just, you know, bluey green. Green I'm going to use is the one called Evergreen Bow, which is a lovely cool sort of like um, greyish green, but it's 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 not too much in the grey either. It is just a lovely colour. Come on, off you come. Might need to re-ink some of these because I haven't used them for a while. You can see I've got a bit more green going on in places, and I may need to add bit more in so a bit over here yeah I definitely need to come back with more some more pink and purple because I'd like another spot or two of that oh, take that off pop that underneath my evergreen bow because I'll keep these now I've started using them again so if I go back to my pinks and purple which is here I definitely want some purplish colour and I think I'm going to head for that villainous potion she says picking up a new one of these ink blending pads, which I don't need to use. Let's get the one I put underneath the kitsch flamingo, which I'm not going to use. See, I've got some inky fingers. That looks quite nice. Oh, the paper I'm using is Canson Imagine. It's my favourite paper at the moment. Whether it remains my favourite paper, I don't know. But it seems to be one I reach for an awful lot at the moment. So I've got some nice interesting colours going on there. I would like some of the pickled raspberry again, just to bring some pink back. So I'm just going to stroke off some of that villainous potion. If they blend, I don't mind on the thing. Creates a random blend. I do want some pink up here along the edge of this one, I think, just to add some variation in colour here. Righty ho. Perhaps just some more here because that's quite an insipid, insipid area. Now I could do the same kind of thing with watercolours. But I'm not quite sure how this paper would cope with the amount of watercolour I'd put on. But, um, you know, 
it's something I can consider in the future, perhaps. That's how I deal with things like this. Okay, we just pop a lot of things away. Things can go in there, open that. Okay, um, the makeup brushes or the blend, the ink blending brushes, as I should call them, for the same thing. You just probably could get them really, really cheap in your, you know, um, we call them pound stretchers over here. The pound shops or i think you call them dollar stores in america so this is my square the square is 14 and a half centimeters ish by 14 and a half centimeters which is about it was five and three quarter inches square i cut it that size so i could get the, the two nice size squares identical size squares out of a piece of a4 paper and i've got this long strip which if i cut it in two will make, you know, bookmarkish sized pieces, which will work for me. Right, I've got my, I've got a spray bottle here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually flick droplets of water on. So I'm dipping the end in and I am just splashing it. And what this will do Distress ink reacts with the water and it spreads outwards and what you get when you dry it with a heat tool is you get lovely round edges. Now these are quite small but I'm going to give a quick spray and spritz as well because that will add a bit more in places. I'm going to pick it up and move some of these around if they will so I've got drippage going on. Do it the other way as well. So we get some marks that way, this way. So it will add some more texture. And then I'm going to dry with my heat tool. So bear with me with this. Luckily, the heat tools aren't too noisy. The, the embossing tools are incredibly noisy. And it shouldn't take too long. I'm not dabbing the color up. I could have done that, but I don't want to. The other advantage of doing this is it gets the distress ink to sink into the paper. And these little marks here, um, they're, they're unusual sizes <laughs> and shapes, but I'll work with those because they'll become part of the overall pattern and so on. So what I will do is I'm going to, I've got out my um, Twisby Eco pens so that um, they've got the documenter sink in. I have got some white gel pens here. I've either got my um, gold duo pen or I've got some metallic inks um, that I could use to add gold on the top. Now, I could do something similar with the Gansai Tambis or any other watercolors or watercolor markers. Um, pastel pencils, anything you'd like to do. And I may actually use um, pencils later on to um, intensify colour or paints would be my preference, to intensify colours or to add colours um, once I've done some drawing on this. Now, part of me thinks I should be using a nice big piece of paper so I can create nice large plate, nice large spaces but I tend to work on the small scale anyway. So this really is just an experiment. I'm just having a look to see if these are all dry. I'm just going to hit the back of the paper with the heat tool, just to make sure the back is nice and dry. And there I've got one background. So I'll take my rough paper out the way. I will take that out the way. And I have, yes I have, because I think my ink pens may need a bit of help here in starting or keeping the nib clean. But this is what I'm going to use and I'm going to work with these patterns. Let me just pull my camera forward a moment. Backwards even. Will it go backwards? Most well, probably not. That's okay. It's mostly on the screen. I, I can pull it a little bit more towards me. There we go. I've got a piece of my kitchen towel gets used until I can't use it anymore. 
Um, I'm going to use my um, my my fine one, which is this one. Um, I've actually got two that are purple in colour, but one of them is slightly lighter. I don't know if that shows up. It actually glows in the dark. If I leave it out in light to charge it up, so it's quite cool. That's okay. This pen is working. So I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to look at this and I'm just going to think about where there are sections that I could actually draw patterns on. Now I'm not going to pay attention too much to these um, water distressed areas. I, did, I, I said I was going to think whether I wanted to add any more colour. I don't think I'm going to do now but I think I might once I've um, added the, the pattern. You can see here I've got a fingerprint there and I've got one here. And I'll make a feature of these because they're, they're obvious shapes that I can start with. You don't have to be precise with this. And I, I'm likely to do this in my own kind of characteristic style. So I'm going to go down actually, down to here. There we go. So that was, that was a fortuitous line because I'm not thinking this. But I have made use of these little white spots along the way to help work out where this line was going. And I am going to really have a good go at making slightly bigger corner roundings than I would um, if I was doing sort of Zentangle inspired or entangled art, because they, um, they're more characteristic of neurographic art. So. I'm just letting my pen wander. I'm not thinking about the shape I'm making. I'm not trying to create anything particular, but I am just using this as a way to create space and shape where it can go. And I think this one will happily go down here and I'm just going to have it loop round like so. So rather than anything else I'm creating a different kind of shape and some of my lines will be thicker than others and I'm fine with that and again I'm going to use this line and that space there as a way of splitting this up and I'm going to round corners as I go because it's a tedious task if that's what you've got to do at the end and there's the danger of missing them so that's beginning to look quite cool so I'm going to start here. I'm going to go like that. I've got a corner there or a joint where lines join. And I think I may just take this one off the page, that one off the page, and just create this little space here, which I can fill in with pattern. I am working up to the edge of my page, which isn't something I w I'd want to do if I was going to mat my work but this is an experiment it could end up in a sketchbook but it may end up being all right at the end of it so and I actually think this size paper might actually work out nicely for me because it it suits my size of drawing I'm not somebody who draws on a large scale and I will draw on a4 paper I'll show you a drawing I, I was working on last night um, at the end of the video and you'll be able to see that that is A4 but it's ever so intricate and it's not been drawn in black ink. I'm not drawing it in black ink which is a change for me. So there's a lovely spot of blue here so I'm going to just go around that and then There. Let's just tidy this end up and that bit there and here and there. Here I want something, I want some things happening in here. I think I'm going to take advantage of some of these shapes just to get little textures going already in this space. 
And I think perhaps I might just fill that space with one. Again, just making sure that I do these little bits. So I will link the, the woman who I watched because I just thought, gosh, it's what, whenever I've seen neurographic art, I've gone, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It reminds me of stuff I do. And I'm sure I've done things like this in the past, in the long distant past, before I had a YouTube channel. But there must be a reason why that appeared on my feed. Recently, because, um, you know, I'm convinced that Google listens to us. <laughs> I'm sure it's psychic. I'm joking about that, by the way, possibly. Yeah, I certainly seem to get interesting suggestions on YouTube this day, these days. And I do have um, a few Google devices in my house. Well, I've got three. Yeah, I've got three. One upstairs, two downstairs. And um, I do talk to them a lot, as in ask them to do things for me. They're proving to be very useful. I never thought would have thought I would have wanted such things. But I'm also aware that whatever we ask them is fed back to help improve their the AI algorithm and the way it works, which I don't have a problem with, really. And I know I've got a little um, button I can slide so that the devices can't listen in on me if I wish to keep my privacy from Google. Um, but um, I've got a nice shape space here, haven't I? I've got an interesting shape space. And I think I may just add some more interesting shapes, as it were. Just add that to the end so it looks like it's connected to the edge of the page. Yeah. So I, I'm getting different things suggested to me than usual. And sometimes it's a bit frustrating because I'm getting the same old, same old kinds of things. And I like to watch things that are a bit different. Because when you get the same old stuff, you, yeah, you can get inspired, but it doesn't really broaden your mind. to the possibilities. And of course, when I was watching, oh, I wish I could remember a name. I meant to write it down, but you know, I was so keen to come and do a video. It's, you know, it's that kind of day today, it's a slow day for me. As in, I need a slow day today, as I did yesterday. Still haven't woken up properly, which you can most probably tell from my rambling randomness here. And I thought it'd be quite nice to come and see. Look at that, there's that a lovely shape there. I'm just gonna pick out like so. I may just go like that, because that's a very typical me kind of thing to do at the moment. I seem to be using this kind of shape an awful lot in circular, circular-ish, round-ish kinds of objects. As I go back, I can see where perhaps I just need to thicken some of these to make them look like there's a better connection there. I think I'd prefer that. It's a bit more diva dancey in a weird way, isn't it? actually works. And it's all learning, isn't it? It's all experimenting. And whatever I learn from this, whatever I see that I enjoy here, it can be taken back to use with my other art, or it will come out there in some way or another. And so um, I will do some watercolour at some point. I, I'm really enjoying this, I have to say. It's very fun. something completely different to do. And I'm at the whim of my coloured background more than anything in some ways. I 
that could be construed as rather rude so I'm going to alter this shape now and change things up a little bit here yeah I was thinking why have I drawn that <laughs> yeah sometimes adolescent brain kicks in we fixed it though hopefully though people may always see that as something a bit on the rude side not intended honestly completely unintentional but we can always fix things you can always do something to improve things can't we it's never a big problem so I might actually go up there and add a shape like that to that side and I may just go here and do the same there it does work okay I want to leave some big areas because or biggish areas because I just think that they will work quite nicely in, in one way or another so let me have a look here well that went across so that's not a problem because I will just add it like that so it was meant to be that way I think wasn't it some really interesting shapes and patterns appearing here that would work nicely in my other work. I'm really quite intrigued by this now. Okay, I'm just checking that I'm not going to put my hand in a puddle of wet ink. As I will take my heat gun to this once I finish drawing just to make sure everything is nice and dry before I do anything else. Okay. So that works quite nicely there. Just going to go this way. Let's take a line that way. So there's no pattern for me to follow there so I'm just creating you know sort of shapes that appeal to me that would fit together with what I've put in there where I've used elements of the texture in this background color let me know in the comments if this is something you'd like to see more of from me as well or if it's something you're thinking of having a go at I like the idea of doing that colored background and then drawing on top and making use of those colours. So I'll try and keep in view and let you see from time to time what's going on with the entire um, shape here. The entire design rather, not shape necessarily. But um, I could see some lovely rounded colours here so I'm going to make use of those. And I may just make use of these to split the area up a little bit, perhaps. So I'm going to come back and add um, patterns to, or textural patterns here using white and black pen. And I'll use gold then to bring out some other shapes or patterns as well, I think, because those, just those highlights of gold just add something to patterns or to things like this. So I'm just making use of some of my favourite kinds of shapes. These always remind me of sort of veins on leaves or branches, parts of branches. They're basically a letter Y, but you know, quite curved and asymmetrical, so it's not a perfect Y, but you can see we've got the bottom bit and the top bit. They just seem to work nicely for splitting spaces up. In my mind they do anyway. It's something I use in my art as well. Okay, I'm getting on here. What is it? Just over half an hour to get this far.
course you know that I'm going to end up with lots of curvy lines here which is fine for me hopefully you'll find it something to do but really should think about perhaps putting in some straighter lines but now those rounding corner roundings here have created a lovely kind of shape here as well that's interesting I was going to carry this on and I think I perhaps might a little bit. We'll see where that takes us. The bottom, maybe nowhere, maybe somewhere. For now I don't really know. So here I'm going to try and do those roundings so we incorporate that there. Okay, and then This one, I'm just putting an S kind of shape in there, I just noticed. It feels weird not to put sort of um, borders around things. But I do what, I do love clusters of rounded objects. So perhaps I'll do that here and we'll make use of this particular drip which is going all the way down here and turn it into sort of like a pebbly pathway through what could be described as some kind of weird galaxy, I suppose. Look, and it goes up this way as well. So I just want to make sure I join them with nice rounded bits between them. That little bit of darkness does make a difference. So I had hoped I'd do some serious adulting today. It's not gonna happen. like strands of bacteria. Yeah, it doesn't sound pleasant, does it? But you know, I'm a scientist, so things like that interest me. And so uh, we'll go this way. Although bacteria are usually more rounded, but you get the idea. Have that one fading away. Okay, so connect it there because I can. And that gives it two places where it's attached, doesn't it? And then I just carry on down here. This is going to be a love these are going to be lovely spaces to add some extra colour or gold and white and so on but I'm just going to finish filling these in try and keep my hand or my pen out of the way as you see me draw can't guarantee that though I hold my pens at such a funny angle in such a funny way sometimes I seem to manage to get a better angle from where I'm drawing from than I do at other times. It's another warm sunny day here in the UK. My computer tells me it's a mere 15 degrees Celsius outside and sunny which is cooler than it has been of late. So I'm a happier bunny, I'm more comfortable, I don't like it when it's too warm. I also don't like it when it's too cold. But today is about the right temperature I think for me. Because it's sunny, I'll be avoiding sunshine because my skin does not like it. I feel quite bad here in some ways because I love the darker edges to these, to this drip. But, you know, it's, it's part of the process, isn't it? But sometimes things get covered up. It's like in, when people do mixed media art, 
then you, you create backgrounds and you, eventually you cover a lot you may cover most of that up if not all of it in some way or another it's all about a start for what you eventually create so I'm going to carry on with this I'll go back and add all the corner roundings and the moments and I think I'll have it just heading off the edge of the page and I, this is quite angular isn't it funny how I've got all these lovely rounded shapes here and yet the whole thing looks, it's got corners and edges, but I actually really like that. And then I can do a little bit here because that is connecting. And a big one at the end instead of small ones, so that'll work. I've got another one up here I could do something similar to, but I'm going to try not to. I'm going to try and work out something, perhaps something a little bit different. OK, so I'm going to this side again because this is all dry up here. I'm, well, mostly I can see where I've got some left some white bits. There we go. That's better. Create these lovely rounded shapes inside. So I'm having to go back now and thicken up these corner roundings. So I've got these lovely shapes with definite black outlines around them. So that works nicely. OK, so here I think I'm going to use all of these here as a space for adding some concentric circle-ish shapes and again we're just going to round these to give nice rounded bottoms because I like those something lovely about that kind of shape that becomes quite rounded then as well. Like that. And around here as well, because I haven't done that one. Or that one. What's some of these? Huh. But I did them. It's okay, I've caught them. So that's interesting there. And I think I'm going to. That was unexpected. It actually connected there, so have one that connects that way there then. And perhaps do something like that. I don't know much about neurographic art. I know it's used for pe by people to calm, relax, help with their health, the pain and, and so on. It's quite a meditative thing as it's abstract. It's not meant to represent anything and it can be a, it's a very personal kind of response as well. And the lovely thing about this distress ink background I've created is that I can never repeat this. I can never get this exactly the same again. It would be nigh on impossible to. Well, that's interesting, the way that they're joining together. Now look at this. I've got this lovely blue going through here. So I'm going to create some regions that will delineate these colours as well. And they overlap with other places. So let's get these sorted. So this is a bit like Zen Tangle Pattern and Zeppel, where you draw a round shape in a squarish area, a rounded shape. Squash a rounded shape in around the corners, which is perfect for this. Here I've just spilled out a bit much, that's fine. Just go back and fill a bit more in. 
is they don't have to be exactly the same size inside isn't it you know they will be what they will be here and then I just need to do the same here where I'm going to round all of these corners and edges just to get a continuation of those shapes going off the page Now distress inks, like many water soluble media, are not light fast, so they shouldn't be, if you're going to display this, you shouldn't hang it in a sunny place, a very bright light place. It's better if you keep them in a folio or a, you know, in a sketchbook or, a, you know, a portfolio of some kind. That just needed that there. It was such a funny little shape there not now that's nice okay and this one I think can fit in there we're getting somewhere so if I show you the whole of it again you can see that's where I started is there any right way up or down I don't think so but you know oh look there's a lovely edge here as well of color there's one there and there's a lighter one just here so I'll just draw those in oops I get some of the ink on my table bad news because this oh, will be fine it'll wear off if I can't get it off with water or something similar it's only ink and that one I'm going to leave floating as I will this one I think so I'm just having a look around for any larger ones that may be kind of floating or that I can have floating or attached or make part of the design which I'm doing here and go around them with ink. And incorporate them into the design in some way. Oh, all of that in black. I'm just going to colour that in black at the bottom as well. Let's make that a bit. That's nice. Um, I've got this going on here, and I haven't actually done anything with it in the way of. I did with the other drippage. That is a technical term, apparently. <laughs> I've watched a lot of mixed media videos, tutorials and so on in the past. So I've dabbled with mixed media, but it's not really for me. Um, other people may disagree with me when I say that, but I don't think it, you know, it doesn't necessarily, though this class is as mixed media in some ways, because I'm using different media. But um, it's not the kind they refer to there. That's interesting. That's got a very interesting kind of feel to it here. I'm going to go and just join them together. It feels very bony in a weird way. So I do want to, I want to connect those over and there's probably not. But I am going to make use of this and I think I will finish this section off as I did the other drippage. because that's the way I'm going. I didn't think about it, but it's what's happened, so. So it's splitting this colour up in an interesting way. I've got this here, which is one of my fingerprints, finger marks. So I'm just going to Combine that here so it sort of makes that join, I think. It's got this lovely blue here. So I'm just 
picking that out and I think I will here as well so again there's that lovely blue and it sort of like goes up this way so I'm going to make use of that colour there and then it goes on this side the lighter blue goes well it's actually you know it depends how you see colour but for me that's how it needs to go and then I've got areas where I can put other shapes in just to create a more rounded area here perhaps That's quite nice. And there's an edge here where we've got that paler blue or bluey purple as well. So I'll pick that out. I think this needs filling in here because that looks an awkward collection without anything holding them together as it were joining them which is fine I can do that just go back and round these there we go Alright, so how am I doing? I've got this bright, bright blue area here. And so I am going to kind of just pick that one out in that kind of way. But I also think this there will create a nice and there's this blue that goes there. And then there's some pink here, which I will pick out as well, that little section there. So what I need to do now is just go and add these corners in. So I'm beginning to divide some smaller areas. Now then, this one, I've got this lovely darker blue coming through and it it comes up to here. So I think I'm going to create a shape that connects to this one in some way. Sorry, I find it just knocked the camera with my glasses. Oh, that's the wrong way round. That's not very tidy, Angela. I know tidiness isn't always important, but it is part of my, my style. It's what I like to do. There's only so much imperfection I can embrace or randomness. I still need tidy lines. And this one I think can go up and around and connect there. That seems to connect nicely there. And then how do you know when you're done? The answer is I don't know how I know, I just know. I'm not quite done yet, she says, missing, stopping at that line. But I can't be far off. There it is so far. It's this section here. It is lovely, but I can also see plenty of colours in here that I can make use of to perhaps 
add some more sections. There's this lovely edge here of colour. I may actually go back and add some of these kind of humps, open humps on some of these lines on the bigger areas. So it's a nice way of enveloping subtle changes in colour as well as breaking these sections up somewhat. Here I think I'll do one on this side then. This one certainly needs something. It does feel like it, that, that needed that. And it feels like it's one of these hump shapes going off the edge, which is fine. I might do that in a couple of places here because it looks like an odd, odd edge here. I don't want that, I want it to feel that we've just selected part of the whole design. I will fill all of that bit in with black. Just a couple more. I've got this here which can connect here I think. I think I will just pop a smaller version of that shape inside and connect it again with these kinds of shapes. Up at the bottom. This, this feels awkward to me. I don't know if you agree, but it really does. And I think I'm going to make it feel less awkward by drawing that kind of shape around it. That feels better, it feels less awkward there. So let me have a big look at this and see how we're doing. Got a lot of the areas of colour where I have added shapes around them or lines around them to, to bring out these different shapes of the different coloured areas. There's a part here that's slightly different in colour so I'm going to make that what it needs to be. And this I think then could also go here. But I can also see there's purple coming down here, so I'm going to split that that way. That's an unusual shape for me, but it seems the right thing to do there. I've got this lovely purple, purpley blue, this bluey colour going around here, so I can just add that. There's a lovely pink here, isn't there? So that's better. That works. I'm just looking, I've got, oh, so I'm just going to put my hand in it. It's a lovely dark region here of this blue, so it does come from this side up and around here I think. I don't think I want to take it any further because the lines don't have to carry on right through a section, they can stop when they meet another line I think. I say I don't know much about neurographic art but if you just search for it, I'm sure you'll find plenty of results and plenty of people who are showing it on 
YouTube and in other places, it seems to be a kind of thing. I'm doing it more as a, a way of creating an abstract drawing. Okay, last section, I think, oh, no, there's some pink here. See, there's this lovely kind of soft pink edge here, which I'm going to get. That's nice. Okay, any others? There's actually one in here as well. So I'm just going to add that. There is Stupa Blue there as well. Here, I want to do something with this, I think. Make it a feature on its own, rather than leaving it as a, that big blobby water drop. Which is fine, it's nice, but I think I'd prefer to have something here that would Right, we're joining it to all of those then, are we? It seems so. And that's actually worked out nicely because that edge there was a bit awkward, I think. But it's not now. So I'm guessing if this is neurographic art, I'm changing my feeling of awkwardness because I, I really do feel very awkward, especially in social situations, believe it or not. Yeah. I've recognised in myself for a long time that I'm socially awkward. I try, but I never quite get it. That's nice. Actually, I think I'm going to carry this on to the edge now, because that feels again the right thing to do. Just remembered I've got Neo Colour 2s here somewhere, which would be great for working backgrounds like this. I haven't used those in a long while. Neo Colour 2s are by Karen Dash and they are water soluble wax pastels. They're always water soluble, but they have some beautiful, beautiful colours in them. So I'd be able to lay down colours patches of colours very easily with them and water activate them. But then I do need to put a layer of something like, um, oh, what do you call it, gesso, clear gesso on the top so that I can actually draw on top of them because the wax will be picked up on pen nibs and they really don't like it. So um, something to bear in mind, something to consider. That looks almost like a tree trunk, doesn't it? Supporting everything. Little ledge there. I'm just looking for any other colours. There's a colour here, colour edge there, and I'm going to do something like that and then like that because that's where the gradients are, to my eyes anyway. works nicely. This section is all mostly one colour. This one here has some pink in it just around here. So I'm just going to pick that out. I'm beginning to think I'm adding lines for the sake of adding them here, which is always possible. But I've got to trust my intuition with this really and see what happens. I think we all have to. We do work like this. So I'll take a look. 
I've got a lighter blue edge here, a darker blue there, and a lighter, well, I've got a purple colour here. So they may not be exact where the lines are, but it's close enough. And yeah, I think I've got overly ornate, overly fussy, perhaps, but it is what it is now. Okie dokes, perhaps add a bit more black there, and perhaps that can come down there, and perhaps I can have one there, that'll be okay. Awkward connection here. I'm saying about, you know, I really am quite so socially quite awkward. And um, you know, perhaps the, that awkwardness that I see here is more of that. That does look a bit odd over there on its own, but I think that will be useful for adding pattern and texture too, that will bring it into part of this. Cause I do need, I said I wanted some larger areas for stuff, but I seem to have got, so I started this way. We seem to have got an unusual kind of pattern done. And I really do quite like this, you know, I do. How far have we got? Oh, it's an hour and three minutes. Okay couple of things I've just noticed this goes nowhere so we're going to make it go somewhere and I may actually make it go somewhere and join down here just going back and rounding where gaps between these are and just filling that in and there and there there and there that's worked that actually works quite nicely and I've got this here which almost could go over this way and connect with this couldn't it and so I've managed now to connect those cobbled-like areas, haven't I? Which is quite nice. This is a, an interesting bit here that I'd like to do something with. Like so, perhaps. And now we'll just draw those as rounded. This one needs to be a lot more rounded than it is. That's why it felt awkward. So I am just checking over things. These wiggly lines are interesting, but again, I just think they need to go somewhere. So that's quite interesting. Almost like the edge of a shell. Yeah, so we've got that there. And I think I might do the same thing on this other side, leaving the middle bit as it is, but this inner bit here create something so it looks similar to this particular pattern over here. I think it'll work fine. There we go odd stop here so I may I'm going to extend this like 
like so, so that we have that pattern just going off the edge of the page as well. That's better. So it's gone from one section into the other and that feels quite natural. And I think I may just do that here as well, as if there's a natural kind of ripple in that shell. So I'm now beginning to add details to this and to fill in sections to make them more interesting. And that then is when I'll start to add shadows by using darker colours perhaps and other things. That's where I may use coloured pencils or ink tents just to bring these, these things out. Um, I'm up to one hour and seven minutes. So I'll carry on for a bit longer. But I don't think this is going to get finished any time too soon, you know. There's just some of these here. This, this section here really did need something just to make it a bit more interesting. So this is what I am doing, is adding that kind of interest to things, I hope. Okay. I do like patterns that are in black, to be honest. So, a little bit of black missing there. A little bit too much black there. there. Round that around. That needs rounding a bit more that. Okay, so I'm looking at where I think I could do with some patterns or where I would like to add some things. And I think here would be a nice one. I am going to, in places, add kind of like my, my usual kind of borders or ribbons that, can, you know, enclose areas. But I think here, I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finer pen. Yeah, I think I'll take the finer pen. Fill this section in with just very fine lines. So it's sort of like a, a kind of, it's a textural pattern more than anything. Like so. Okay. This corner here is bugging me now I'm at I'm over here and I am going to connect it with some lumpy bumpy bits to this section here. And that just makes a nice shape as well. There we go. That feels better. I think you get, you, you know, I get to that point where I just think, yeah, that's what I need to do here. And here is pretty much the same kind of thing, I think, around the edge on that side. And perhaps some down this side until they disappear to nothing. Perhaps I can do that going this way. That was interesting. Like so, and then perhaps one there. It does need a bit more. There we are, that'll be better. That feels better. Yeah, that, that works. And this little section here that I've just done lines going horizontally, I'm going to go back and add lines, or well, vertically, because I'm drawing them vertically, close together. So it just adds some darkness to the color underneath without turning it all black which is always useful. Just cleaning my nib off. I've just noticed that here I've got this unusual shape here that hasn't really been 
This needs to have the same kind of treatment as this here. And even though the lines are a bit thinner, they still fit in. So that's quite nice. And I think I'll do the same as I did just now in that area where I get these two kind of curve around the edge and connect a bit more like that. Looks almost like a branch now, doesn't it? Seriously does. So I'm wondering whether this is the right way up because this then is supporting everything possibly. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, anything else? Any other areas? I'm going to add some circles into this. And they could be interesting to add colour to. Here's me thinking this was going to be a quick piece of art. And of course I'm desperate to carry on with it now. I want to see how it will end up. What the addition, I think I'm going to use ink tents on top of these. What the addition of that will do, because I know I've got colours similar to this so I can intensify these colours, but I'm also wary of doing that because I will shift the distress ink and I don't want to do that. Coloured pencils may be the way to go, she says. Okay, and this is a bit on the awkward side. So I'm going to add some shapes there and perhaps just break this up a little bit here as well. Now this kind of thing has been appearing in my abstract and tangled art quite a bit recently. It's inspired by Rebecca Blair. It's something I've done often in the past, but it's just that simple kind of pattern texture that I really like. I get too ornate at times, I think, too fussy. So there's a bit more there. So that ties in with other areas, which is quite nice. And it does connect here, you can see. And so much so, I may just put a couple of pieces here just to suggest that it's all connected. And that looks like one could go there as well. There. This little bit here, I do want to fill in and I'm going to do it with, well, I'm going to do the Zentangle pattern tipple because I can, for no other reason. And that little white bit that was there that stood out is now sort of like sent backwards. It's, it's less distracting for that reason. Okay, so here I'm going to just split this off. I'm going to split another bit off here. Again, so I have that kind of bordering edge. I've got some unusual, this is an awkward shape here. A bit like a Star Trek communicator badge shape. Yeah, I know, I've geeked again. Okay, so I am enjoying this kind of thing here. I do have to say that. So I'm going to do something similar here where I'm going to fill this section with long, thin, rounded boxes, as it were, long, thin, rounded, that sort of like are narrower towards the middle, or you know, towards the top of where I'm drawing because that will help to give us a feeling of movement and volume as it were. I do like these. I mean it's just a variation on what I did instead of being sort of like squarish, blockish, these are now thin. 
tall and thin or short and wide depending on which way round you're looking so that actually works quite nicely so much so I'm going to complete this section in it Now, Distress inks aren't the only water reactive inks there are on the market. Many different companies have variations on the theme on their own style with their own colour palettes. I think Lavinia Stamps have a lovely set and perhaps when I've run, my Distress inks have run out or dried up, um, I may look, in, look at getting some of those because the colours appeal to me again. Um, but use what media you've got that you can create a colourful background with. I'd veer away from coloured pencils though unless you've got a pen that can draw on them without it being ruined. Um, and I prefer much to put the colour in the background first and then draw the shape with this. I think than doing it the other way round it seems. So be prepared for more like this forget how much I like it. So that's actually worked out quite nicely there, hasn't it? Okay, I'm looking for long shapes. I've got a lovely long edge here and what I'm going to do here I'm going to put some leaves along it. I'm putting mine quite close together because, you know, this is me we're talking about here, and the strange one. And they're getting more rounded at the tip as I go up, but that's fine. But they're going to be fun to put some gold and other things in. And that's quite nice because it feels like I'm adding an edge to this, like the edge of this section is curling upwards. So that's quite fun actually. So let's go back and just round in between them. There's one thing I am, it's consistent with how I have things. And the lines are a bit more delicate than the rest of the, um, most of the rest here, but I'm fine with that. And I am going to just connect them together here as well. So again, it looks like the edge of a shell almost. That wasn't my intent. I was going to leave them as leaves. But it gives it that feeling of actually curving upwards in a very nice kind of way. Some of these are tiny, so perhaps I will fill them in between them with black. See how that looks. Just felt the right thing to do. So I'm going to trust my instincts and go with it. The black gives that, actually I might just curve them up at the top as well. So we've got alternating black and white curved bits or leafy bits here. So that'll work nicely. Now I've got one here so I'm just going to fill that one in. Okay, let me just curve them up why I've put them in as curving downwards and that gives a nicer edge. I, I don't want it sharp. It looks sharp as if it would cut you so I'm, I'm smoothing that out. So that's given a nice edge there and I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw some curved lines that will help with this feeling that that pattern I've just drawn is holding something or you know sort of like cuddling something in place. So I'm just going to put this in. I'm going to do the grounding again. And at the bottom as well. Be consistent is my phrase here. Let's be consistent about what we do across the whole design. Otherwise something will stand out and will feel awkward. To me anyway it does. So 
There's no light source with this. It's just going to be whatever feels correct to do. So I've got all of that there. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to draw a little aura to the top of each of these sections so it looks more like it's something that's ridged. So There we go. So I'm going to be doing a lot of this where I'm adding patterns and texture to this, but I'm going to try not to overdo it. I want to leave some sections as they are, but I'm, I think I'm going to focus more on these, these kinds of sections. Now then, just before I finish, I'm going to dig and delve. Wrong pencil case. You have no idea how many pencil cases I've got out here. This is my Pilot Shoes 07 pen. This is white pigment ink. It's permanent, well, I'm not sure if it's waterproof or water resistant when it's dry. It's quite opaque and this one gives quite a nice fine line. So I'm just getting it started. Look on the back of my hands. My hand's rough enough to take um, marks off. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put A dot and or a couple of dots and a line depending on the beginning and the start of the line. That means I'm less likely to draw over the black ink. Like so and then that one will be there. It's very subtle but there is a highlight there and I can do the same kind of thing here where I can just fill I'll draw a circle inside. I'll decide if I want to add colour to them. I'm kicking myself because I did have Posca pens here. I had some white Posca pens, but do you think I can find them? So they would have been perfect. But these are really pretty good, so I'm happy with this one. So there's some highlights being added in, some contrast there. It's subtle because this, as I say, this pen the, the ink is opaque, but it's so, you know, it comes out. There's quite little of it there. Um, I am going to dot some white in here just to break this up and to add some interest because I can. It's my favourite phrase. If I can do it, I will. I may not like what I've ended up with, but at least I've gone with my instincts and tried something just caught my attention there so we've got some that's broken that grid up and it's added little highlights of little twinkles going on gold I need to get um, gold paint or gold ink out to use and I think that'll be my last step but um, I really am enjoying what I've got here and I hope you're enjoying it too because um, it's one of these things that is simple to do you might disagree with me you might say it's simple for you angela but give it a go and trust your instincts and you will find out more about shapes and forms and line drawing and adding patterns and texture i'm adding some stippling here to give some shade underneath these narrow bands stippling is just little dots to add shade and you can vary the density of them. The more dots there are, the darker it is. And the bigger the dots, the darker it is. I'm just using my extra fine nibbed eco pen here. And here I'm thinking now, oh, I've got pit artist pens, but 
but it's matching the colours that I think I'd want. So that's added a bit of hint of shadow there. I'll tidy that up later and I can do the same in other places where I might want to bring out some of the, the colours and the gradi grad grad gradations, the gradients and the colours there. So I'm going to say thank you for joining me. This is a super long video. I hope that you found it interesting. This is far from finished. Um, I'm not sure whether I'll finish this my oh God, I just noticed something. This is a very peculiar kind of shape there, isn't it? So I'll just break that one up. There and there. That's better. Phew, I'm glad I noticed that. And I think I might just break this off in a staggered way compared to that line there. That line needs a bit more of this. I'm going to find lots more spaces where I need to tidy things up as I go and look. That feels better now. It does. It does. This one. And I'm going to do the same here where I'm going to add them in like this. That's nice. That works. Yeah, that does there. And this one can have some odd edges because there's little colour, little bits of colour in it. And this one too. What about that? So there's going to be more. You see, I said it's an extra long video and I'm already making it extra long for you. Sorry. But, you know, needs must. And this one here can just go like that as well. One as well in there. And here. That's nice. I like that. And this one here can have this and this. So that's going to be fun to do. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I got carried away. Right. I'm not sure whether I'm going to finish this off on my own. Part of me says no, because I can create another background, work on that myself, and then show you the two, come back and finish this. If you would like to see me do more with this, okay, on in a video, just leave a comment and I will do it. I will put it to one side for now. And if enough of you would like to see more, just let me know. Until the next video, which hopefully won't be quite as long. Oh, this is going to be well over an hour and a half. Ah, please look after yourselves. Take care and find time to be creative. And thank you so much if you got through to the end. I appreciate that so much. Until the next one, take care. Bye bye now.